I was supposed to preach uh, about Joseph today, but then I said we'll finish about Joseph in a right uh, uh, as we finish next Sunday will be the last sermon on biographical, and so I thought we will finish with Joseph next Sunday, and today we will take on Samson. Today will be a negative sermon basically, but then it will end in a positive, in a good me- in a good news on this sermon, and. Uh, I was thinking about Joseph and I was studying about Joseph and then the Bible says the word Joseph means the Lord shall add another son. Joseph means the Lord shall add another son. So I told my wife if the Lord blesses us with a son we will put him Joseph <laughs> and then the first son and then we will have another and then another Joseph and another Joseph. So the Lord keeps adding until we have nine. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, we are going to study today about the life of Samson. And um, we will be studying about Samson, a man who was very strong and powerful. Amen? Amen. How many of you like to be like Samson? Anybody? Amen. The first part, not the second part. The second part, he became a weak person. But yes, Samson was a strong man. Because the Spirit of God and the power of God rested upon him. Amen? Amen. And uh, we are going to see Samson, the man who romanced with the world. Samson, the man who romanced with the world. There are two kinds of romance today. Now when I say romance, perhaps I see somebody giving me a smiles over there. But the word romance is a very pure word. Amen? Amen? It's not dirty. It's not bad. The Oxford Dictionary says, uh, uh, Romance means a love affair. Amen? It's a good thing. We have a love affair. If you're a child of God, you have a love affair with Jesus Christ today. Amen? Amen. And that is spiritual. He loves you. And you love Him. Amen? Amen. If you are a ch- uh, if, uh, you have a love affair with your parents and that's a parental affair. Your parents love you and the child loves you. Husband and wife have a, has a love affair. The husband loves you and the wife loves you. There's a romance. And we are going to see a romance about, uh, about, about Samson having a romance with the world. But at the same time, as we see in a negative term about Samson, we will quickly jump and see the good news of having a spiritual romance or a spiritual love affair with the Lord Jesus Christ today. Amen. Today the word romance has an awkward meaning. It directly sends a message to a mind regarding something that is vulgar. But the meaning of it is a love affair. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. Christian life is a romance with Jesus Christ. But many Christians today are romancing with the world like Samson did. Samson was powerful. He took it for granted. And he thought, man, the power of God is resting upon me. And so, you know what? The power will always be with me. And I can do whatever I want. I can just say whatever I want to say. I can go wherever I want to go. And the power of God will rest upon me as long as I do whatever I want. That's not what is going to happen. Samson was a man upon whom the power of God rested upon him. Amen. Amen. He was strong. The Bible even tells us in the book, in the chapter 15 when you read, the Bible tells Samson went into the field and he caught 300 folks. He caught in this hand, he caught in the other hand. He caught the folks, he tied their tails and put firebrand and set them onto the field. How many folks can you hold today? At least one? Not even one. You're afraid. Right? But Samson was so mighty and so powerful, he could hold 300 foxes and tie their tail with firebrands and set them into the field of the Philistines. So powerful was Samson. One day he went into the field, he saw a lion over there. And then what happened? He caught the lion, he tore him into pieces and there was honey inside the lion. It tasted really good. He was so strong. He was able to tear the lion into two and he was able to destroy, uh, he, was ab- he was able to uh, destroy anybody and everybody. 
and uh, he even was able to hold uh, 300 foxes by the tails and tie them with fire brands. So mighty and so powerful. Samson took God's power upon him for granted. Some of you, you do not know, but God's power rests upon you. But you, if you are trying to live as you want in the world and, and trying to romance with the world, I tell you, it will be not so very far distant. One day, you'll find, wake up in the morning and see God's power not on you. You'll be a weak, helpless man and woman. I praise God, we don't have to be so. Amen? Amen? Because we have a warning today from the Bible. And thank God for a preacher who can preach you the warning sermons. And don't get mad at me today. I'm going to preach a good message. Hopefully that be a blessing to you. You can love the systems of the world which is worldly romance. You can love the Lord Jesus Christ which is a spiritual romance. I want you to decide today. In your mind before you leave this room. And as you are going to listen to me. I know one thing for sure. I prayed about this sermon for a long time. You are not going to go empty. You are either going to be mad at me. Angry with me. You are going to be very happy. Something or the other is going to happen. But as you are going to sit over here. You will either be under conviction. Or you are going to feel uncomfortable. As you listen to this sermon today. Something is going to happen in your heart. But throughout this sermon, the Spirit of God will speak into your heart. Listen to Him carefully. And I'm just a vessel in the hand of the Lord, willing to be used this morning so He can bless your heart. Amen. Amen. Would you turn with me to the book of Judges, chapter 16? The book of Judges, chapter 16. And I will read for you from verse number 1 through 25. And uh, man of God and woman of God, would you please stand for the reading of God's word. Judges chapter 16, the Bible tells, Then went Samson to Gaza, and saw there an harlot, and went in unto her. And it was told the Gazites, saying, Samson is come hither, and they compassed him in, and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city, and required all the night, saying in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. For the lack of time, I'm going to jump into a couple of verses and you follow me. I'm reading verse number 4. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorek, whose name was Delilah. And the Lord of the Philistines came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him, and see wherein his great strength lieth, and by what means we may prevail against him that we may bind him to afflict him, and we will give thee every one of us eleven hundred pieces of silver. Verse number 9. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he break the wits, as the tread of the towel is broken, when it toucheth the fire. Number 12. And Delilah therefore took new ropes and bound him, Therewith and said unto him, The Philistine be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait, abiding in the chambers. And he brake them from his arms like a tread. Number 15. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. Number 17. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Number 19. And she made him slip upon her knees, and she called for a man, and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him and she said the Philistines be upon thee Samson 
And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. Number 25. And it came to pass when their hearts were merry that they said, Call for Samson that he may make a sport. And they called for Samson out of the prison house and he made them sport and they set him between the pillars. Shall we call the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful time. Thank you for your love and mercy and grace. This morning, O oh God, help us to see what is in the scripture. Help us to understand what the truth is. Help us to apply it to our life. Help us, O oh God, that thou will bless us through this preaching today. May all things be brought to light about our relationship with you. Even as I preach to your children, may I preach to myself. May I keep myself holy as thou art holy by thy power and by thy grace. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Give me the words of utterance. Give your children a receptive heart and an alert mind today that they may listen to thy word and take it in a right spirit. I promise you, Lord, I will not touch thy glory this morning. My desire is to praise you, is, is to lift you up, magnify you and exalt you so that Jesus Christ may be glorified. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Samson the man who romanced with the world. Samson the man who romanced with the world. A message very appropriate for the young ones. A message very appropriate for the married ones. A message very appropriate for those who are thinking of getting married. A message very appropriate for those who are Thinking I don't want to get married. Anybody here who thinks you don't want to get married? Nobody. Very good. Here is a man who says, uh, here is a man who we see that is romancing with the world. And we see the consequences of Samson loving the world. Or romancing with the world. You read in verse number 4 something that really tells you the whole story and it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorak whose name was Delilah you see if you read in the past if you read in chapter 15 chapter 14 chapter 13 chapter 12 we see something over there God is telling to Samson hey Samson I don't want you to go to Philistines and marry his parents are telling to Philist, uh, Samson, I don't want you to take a woman from Philistine. But Samson did not listen. He goes and he loves a woman in Philistine. Her name is Delilah. Now last Sunday we, see, we saw about choosing a good name. Right? We, we saw about uh, uh, to choose a good name than silver and riches or gold. We saw about how excellent is the name of the name of the Lord God. We saw about the name. Here is a name called Delilah. Now, uh, now to pronounce that name, it looks very fashionable, isn't it? Delilah looks good, sounds good. Delilah, but it's a very wicked name for what this lady did. Couple of Years ago, I went to Pan Jim in one, in, in one uh, hotel to, to book a room for one of a visiting preacher. And the receptionist there, her name was Delilah. And I was startled. I said, what? What's your name? And she said, Delilah. And then I did not tell why I asked her. I just said, okay, that's fine. 
But sometimes the parents, they put such names for their children, not knowing what it means. Here is a woman called Delilah, and she was not a good woman. She was a wicked woman. We see, what we see here is Samson loved Delilah, but Delilah did not love Samson. You cannot clap with one hand, you need two hands to make a noise. Amen? And we see here, and it came to pass afterward, that he loved a woman in the valley of Sorak, whose name was Delilah. After reading this whole chapter of 16, you find that true, Samson loved Delilah, but Delilah did not love Samson. That's where the problem started in his life. He was not supposed to go to Philistine. He went. And then he loved a woman for some other reason and not for the right reason. The Bible tells us in verse number 5, And the lords of the Philistines came up unto her, and said unto her, Entice him. The Bible says to us in Proverbs chapter 1, My son, he seen us, entice thee, consent thou not. Amen. Amen. And uh, enticing is to put a net around you, so you are under the bondage of that net, and you cannot get out of that net. Putting a net for a bird so you can catch it, that the bird may not fly. Enticing with a net. And so enticing is to speak so slippery words and to cause a man to tell you things that you want to know so you can destroy that person. And the lords of the Philistine came up unto her and said unto her, Entice him. And see wherein his great strength lieth. And by what means we may prevail against him. And that we may bind him to afflict him. And we will give thee, every one of us, eleven hundred pieces of silver. Eleven hundred pieces of silver. All that she needs now is money, money, money. She does not love Samson. She loves the money. Now, Delilah is the picture of the world. Delilah is the picture of the world. And Samson is now romancing with the world. When he is going against the will of God, he is going against the will of his parents. She loves money, he loves her. From verse 6 to 18, if you study, you find the techniques of wooing, techniques of enticing. I will read very quickly for you and you listen to me as I read verse number 6 to 16. And you, I hope you don't misunderstand me to be a Pentecostal speaking in tongue. I'm reading faster, that's why. The Bible says, And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. And Samson said unto her, If they be bind me with seven green beads, they were, they were never dry, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Then the lords of the Philistine brought up to her seven green beads, which had not been dried, and she bound him with, him, with them. Now there were men lying in wait, abiding with her in the chamber. And she said unto him, The Philistine be upon the Samson, and he break, with the, break the weeds, and the tread of tar is broken when it touched the fire. So his strength was not known. And Delilah said unto Samson, Behold, thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Now tell me, I pray thee, wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If they bind me fast with new robes that, may, that never were occupied, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Delilah therefore took new robes and bound him therewith and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And there were liars in wait abiding in the chamber. And he break them from off his arms like a trail. And Delilah said unto Samson, Either to thou hast mocked me and told me lies, tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he, and he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. And she fastened it with the pin, and, and said unto him, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he waked out of his sleep and, and went away with the pin of the beam and with the web. And she said unto him, How canst thou say I love thee when thine heart is not with me? 
Thou hast mocked me these three times and has not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was waxed unto death. That he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God and from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. What you saw right now is, three times Delilah tried to find out where the strength of Samson lied, so she can tell the Philistine and that she can get the money from the Philistines, 11 silver coins. Wow! And then what Samson actually knows in whose hand he is, and so what Samson does is not telling her. Samson knows that this is not the right woman. Samson knows this is a woman who is actually going to destroy him. Samson knows there's no success being with this woman. All that he needs is a flesh. He knows. He knows he's holding the fire in his hand. Can a man hold the fire in his hand and will not be burned? It will burn. Am I right? When you all are looking at me as if you didn't have breakfast. Am I right? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Very good. Sounds good. Okay. So we see uh, Samson is now holding the fire in his hand, knowing it's going to burn. And that's why when Samson is uh, with Delilah, and Delilah is asking for his power where it lieth, he is not telling her, because he knows the consequences. It is the same with you and me, we know the consequences of dealing or romancing with the world, we know what our consequences will be, that we will be destroyed, that we will lose the peace, that our life will not be the same, we know the consequences of romancing with the world, yet, what do you do? You put a step ahead, and go, and do, or say, or hear, or romance with the world. Am I right? That's the truth, my beloveds. We try to hold the fire even in spite of knowing when it is going to burn. Worldly romance is like a softy ice cream. How many of you had softy ice cream? Softy cons? You have ice cream on top of the cons, right? Under the con, what is there? Sorry? Empty. That's how worldly romance is all about. That's all the love with the world is all about. It's like a soft, it's a cream up on the corn. Down, it's hollow and empty. Romance with Jesus is like a cornetto ice cream. Down there is Cadbury. Amen. It's complete. It's ice creams and cornetto. And it's, it's, it's Cadbury. But worldly romance is like a softy ice cream. It's empty down there. It will destroy you and me. It will take away our joy. It will take away our peace. Poisons are like that. Poisons are, it's like, it may be sweet. And then you go, and you go, and you go, zoom, and you die. That's worldly romance. That's worldly romance. Did I give a good illustration? Thank you. <laughs> okay? That's how the romance with the world is. It's like a softy ice cream cream on top. And down it's empty. That's what our lives is going to be, my beloved. If we are going to romance with the world. It may look good, tasty in the beginning. And then our life will be empty, destroyed, void and darkness. But we thank God that today we don't have to dwell on the bad news. We will jump immediately on the good news and see what God can do in our lives this morning. Amen. So we see about Samson, we see about this lady, Delilah. Delilah is a picture of worldly romance. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm not going to talk about Delilah to you today. My, my message is not about Delilah. 
My message to you and to me today is about the worldly romance, the danger of being in the world and loving the world. And God said, love not the world and the things there are in the world. For if you love the world and the love of God dwelleth not in you. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm trying to talk. That's the that's where it will come to. It's not about Delilah. It's about the world. It's about the worldly system. It's about you giving more time to the world. It's about you spending more time into the worldly system. It's about you who try to uh, try to hold the fire in spite of knowing it's going to burn you. It's about you dwelling in and loving the systems of the world. Is it right? Is it wrong to love the world? Well, God said, for God so loved the whole world. When God said, to God so loved the whole world, He's talking about you and me and the people in the world. Amen. When the Bible tells us, love not the world, it's telling us not to love the systems of the world. Not to love the fashions of the world. Sadly, what we see today, instead of the church influencing the world, we see the world influencing the churches today. Am I right? We see church, we sin creeping into the churches instead of churches going out and purifying the people by the preaching of the gospel. We see today the world, worldly systems having 24 hours of busy work doing overnight job so they can destroy you and me, but you and I sleeping and doing nothing for our spiritual growth. That's what it's all about. Samson the man who romanced with the world. Now she's asking him three times, tell me where's your power? And all this three times he told something else. And all these three times, he woke up having the strength with him. He woke up. He was as mighty as he, he was. Nothing bad happened to him. Because he did not tell the secret where the strength lieth. But then you know what she did? She said one thing that you should be careful of. You guys and you girls, listen to me very carefully. Verse number 15. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. If thou love me, you tell me. If you love me, you do this to do this to me. If you love me, you you come with me. If you love me, you say. If you do, you do this thing. I, I, I hope you are trying to get what I'm trying to say, right? That's what is happening in colleges and school today. And guys trying to deceive the ladies and the girls trying to deceive the boys. Hey, if you love me, then show me this. If you love me, then do this. And if you love me, this is what. That's what the devil told Jesus Christ when he was carried in the wilderness the 40 days as he was fasting. If you are the Son of God, then turn the bread, uh, turn the stone into bread. This is what was told to Jesus on the cross. If you are the prime, if you are the Messiah, bring yourself down. This is what Delilah told Samson, if you love me. Then tell me, because I want to destroy you. You must only believe what Jesus says. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my words. Amen. Amen. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. If you love me, you will continue in my words. Only believe Jesus and His Word. Amen. Don't try to fall a prey for some temptation just to prove that you love when you know you're walking on a slippery sand. There is a solid rock upon which you can stand. 
The Bible says in Psalm chapter 40, I waited patiently upon the Lord. And, and I cried and He inclined unto my cries. He brought me out of the miry clay from the pit of sin. And He washed me. And He cleansed me. And He put my feet upon a solid rock. And He established my going. And He put a new song in my mouth. Amen. If you're a child of God today, you must know that you are upon the solid rock. I don't want you to sleep and jump into the sand where you will be drowned. Amen. Be very careful. Be very careful. You will see how she is wooing him. Don't believe anyone who say, do this, do that if you love me. Believe only Jesus Christ. Delilah's love was a hypocritical one. That's what the worldly love is. The worldly love, sadly, when you go around from Mabsa to Panjim and you see on the advertising board, you don't see some good things today. All that you see today is wickedness. All that you see is sin. All that you see is provocate you pictures on the boards, on the sign boards today. That's how the world is trying to get you. That's how the world is trying to win you. And by the way, you know that. And you still go towards this because you think that's tasty. But there's ice cream on the top of the softy corn. There's emptiness below. Amen. Amen. Remember that all the time. Remember all the time that you come across this thing. My beloveds, let's have a passion. Let's have a desire to live a holy life. Let's have a desire to live a life for the glory of God. Things will be fine. In verse number 19. Oh, verse number 16, sorry. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with the words. You don't fall in sin in a one day. You don't fall in sin in the first very day or whatever it is. You fall in sin when you keep on going when you know that's what is going to happen. You fall into sin when you keep on doing when you know that's going to destroy you. Samson knew and yet he allowed his life in the worldly romance. It says, And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was waxed unto death. Beloved, you as a Christian, you are up on the table. You are up on a high ground. But a sinful people are down on the ground. And when they will hold your hand and pull you down, and you try to pull, I'm telling you, you will never be able to pull them up, but they will be able to pull you down. That's the strength of the worldly power when you allow your hand to get into the worldly romance. When you willfully get into the world, be ready to know that it will destroy you by pulling you down. Samson knew. But Samson allowed himself to be there. He allowed him to be pulled down and she pulled by telling him daily waxing his soul. And he waxed him. And his soul was waxed unto death, the Bible says. Verse number 17, and, and that he told her all his heart and said unto her, There has not Come, a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my, mother's womb, from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Hey, do you know, I'm not trying to tell you, okay, I have this Aadhaar card and I, I have all these things. And I'm not trying to tell you and put something else in your mind. But I'm giving an example of this system. Little by little, little by little, they are trying to get to know you completely. 
Am I right? They want you to give your retina. They want your thumbprint. And you have given, I have given. Praise the Lord. As a Bible believing Christian, we are not going to be there when our power will be taken here. We will be raptured. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. But here is what they know. Little by little, little by little, they are trying to get you little by little. Once they get your retina, they already know about you now. They put that, that, that laser in your eyes. They get the whole history about your life. They know how much money you have in your bank. They know everything about you right now. Very soon, they will have that 666 on the forehead or on the, on the, on your, on, on the hand. But thank God. We won't be here on that time. Thank God. God will deliver us and catch us up. We'll be translated into heaven. But they are they're slowly, one by one, one by one, they are trying to get to know everything about you, where your power lies. Right? That's what is happening over here. This is how the worldly system is with the people. And here we see, every day, she was asking him, and now he told all the truths. There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazareth unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me. I shall, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. You know what? Verse number 19. I read 18 now. And when Delilah saw that he had told all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up. This once, for he had showed me all his thought. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. It's all about money. Verse number 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. Did you remember what I told in the beginning how Samson was? It was very powerful, right? He caught the lion, he tore into two. He caught 300 foxes, he tied them. This hand and this hand, so mighty and so powerful. He had all that power. Can you please tell me who is the most strongest thing in the world? Delilah? Or the lion? Delilah is more stronger than the lion. Delilah is the systems of the world. And the systems of the world can destroy you if you become a laptop to the world. Samson was strong, but now he became a laptop for Delilah. Where is Samson sleeping right now? Where is Samson sleeping? Verse number 19. On her knees. <laughs> she is playing with him now. Boy, I know your strength. Join the party. Join the club. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to take away all your power. Samson is now become a laptop to Delilah who was once a mighty man. That's what will happen to your life if you romance with the world. What do you do? Do you do the right thing at the right time? When you need to give time for God, do you give time for God? Or you're romancing with the world? When you need to give time for your family, do you give it? Or you're romancing with the world? What is so important for you, the world or your family? The world or God? What is so important for you? Delilah made Samson, Samson the laptop and he's now sleeping and having the pleasures of the world. 
from verse number 20 to 25, I'm going to finish very soon. Verse number 20 to 25, you see the consequences of romance with Delilah. Consequences of romancing with the world. Verse number 20 says, And she said, The Philistines be upon this Samson, and he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. Hmm. Don't you think? Hey, I'm like David, man. I'll go do everything and I come back and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I committed adultery. God wants some Joseph who can give up the code but not the character. Amen. And by the way, we all are guilty like David. Am I right or wrong? Amen. We all try to romance with the world and say, God will forgive because He's a merciful God, <laughs> loving God, faithful God. Yes, He is. He's looking out for some Joseph inside. Amen. Amen. Who is willing to give up his coat and run away and keep his character. Amen. Amen. Now, by the way, here we see. And, and she said, The Philistines be upon the Samson. And he woke up out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. You know what happened? The Lord departed from Samson. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came uh, and accomplished a certain job and then He left when that was done. When you sin, the Holy Spirit left. That's why David had to pray, Take not thy spirit away from me. Amen. Amen. But now, is, uh, now we see the Bible, in the Bible, we believe in eternal security. We don't believe because we, don't, we like to believe. We believe because the Bible teaches us that we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen. And that He has covered us in the palm of His hand and no one can snatch us away from the Lord. And thank God for eternal security. It's not a license for you to go away from God. And my wife went to visit one family and told them about, Hey, you know what you're doing? You know what you're doing? I wonder if you're really saved or not. Have you ever considered your salvation? And the lady told us, Brother, but eternal security, no? We are once saved, so always saved. So even if we go to the Catholic Church, even if we don't go to church, even if we don't obey what the Bible says, it doesn't matter because we are going to heaven because eternally secured. Eternal security of salvation is not a license for you and not that you are sure of your salvation. Eternal security of salvation is from the Lord sealing you and that if you are really saved and sealed, then the Spirit of God will protect you and keep you and that you are not going to go back to the vomit. Amen. Amen. Eternal security doesn't mean that you know the doctrine and go back to the vomit. A person who is sincerely and honestly saved and truly saved will not, will not go back to all the wickedness. But even when he falls, he'll get up, get right with God and stay with God. Amen? Amen. That is the sign of eternal security. That God has saved me. Oh, I have fallen. Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me. Restore me the joy of salvation. Amen? It's not a sign or not a license for you and for me to do whatever you and I want. But it is a privilege to be humble and love God with all our hearts and mind. Amen. And so we find here His power is gone, departed, He's become helpless, compromised with sin and playing with temptation will lead you to break the fellowship with God. You may not break the relationship, but the fellowship with God will be broken. Amen? You know, when a son sins against a father, you know what will happen? He still remains as a son. But his fellowship with the father will be broken. The father and son will not talk. The father and son will have a problem for some time because the son sinned against the father. But the, but the relationship will not be broken. But the fellowship is broken. Amen. If you are a Christian and you are dwelling in romance with the world, your fellowship with God is broken. And you need to get right with God. And you need to confess your sin and repent 
and, and love the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Satan rejoices and his angels with him and they will make you a sport for themselves if you fall into Satan's trap. What happened later, and I'm not going there, later we see Samson has made a sport with the Philistine. They, they took off his eyes. They made him to do the work of a woman, grinding. Oh, his life has become miserable now. Many of the Christians are in a mood of romance with the world, with Delilah. Worldly romance leave a mark on you and you will leave with a feeling of guilty. Always, thank God, you can come today to God on your knees and fall on your face and ask God to take away the stains and the stains of guilty feelings that you did in the past and God will forgive you and cleanse you with His precious blood. Amen. Amen. Samson's choice was unwise. He became a failure in a woman's trap. In a world strap, let not that happens with you. I want you to come with me to look up with a couple of verses as we finish this sermon. In 1 John chapter 4 verse number 10. In 1 John chapter 4 verse number 10. The Bible tells us, Here in His love, not that we love God. Hey, you know in, in Judges 16 what you saw? Samson loved Delilah. Did Delilah love Samson? No. But see in, the, in, 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 in a spiritual romance what happens. See what happens with the romance with Jesus. Verse number 10. Here in his love. Not that we loved God. But he loved us. Amen. And sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. You know what? He loved and he showed his love by giving his son. Amen. In, in John chapter 15, in verse number 16, you'll see uh, Jesus is telling to His disciples, uh, uh, in verse number 16, chapter 15, Ye have not chosen Me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in My name, He shall give it you. Jesus says, You did not choose Me, I choose you first. Amen. He says, You did not love Me, but I loved you first. That's the romance with Jesus. He chooses you and He loves you first. Amen. You know what the world does? You know what happened to Samson? Samson loved the world. The world did not love him, but the world wanted to destroy him. Because the world hates him. The world hates you. And that's why it destroys you with television. It destroys you with all the wickedness that you watch and read and see and whatever you do. The world hates you. The choice is yours. What you will do. With the truth that is granted to you. That's given to you. The church is the bride and Christ is the bridegroom. In the book of Revelation chapter 21 verse number 9. We see the church is called as the bridegroom. In the book of Revelation chapter 21 Verse number 9, the Bible tells us, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of those seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. Amen. Amen. The church is the bride, the Lamb's wife. And so, let your romance be with Jesus Christ, because you are the bride of Jesus Christ. Amen. Revelation chapter 19 verse number 7 tells us, uh, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come and His wife hath made herself ready. And all God's people said, Amen. Wow, Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. And let your romance be with Jesus and not with the world. Amen. One last verse. One last verse in John chapter 13. Here is what I want you to see, the beauty of this good news. I want now to compare as you turn, I want to compare, I want to tell you that Samson was lying on the labs and became a laptop to Delilah and told all the secrets and got destroyed. But here is the good news for you in John chapter 13. In John chapter 13 you find in verse number 24 through 26, Simon Peter therefore beckoned to him that you should ask who it should be of whom he spake. Now what is he speaking about? They are in the table for the dinner, for the supper and, and God Jesus told, hey 
there's one among you who is going to betray me. And everybody is now wondering who that person is going to betray. And so everybody is asking. And now Samson knows only John can get the secret out of Jesus. Because Samson, Simon knows. Um, did I say Samson? Only Simon knows whom who has a best relationship with Jesus Christ. And so Simon tells John, Hey John, can you ask Jesus Christ? Because he is not telling us, but he will tell you, because your relationship with Jesus Christ is very strong. And so we see Simon, Peter, therefore beacon to him that he should ask who it should be, of whom he spake. Whom is he asking? Verse number 23. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Are you want, do, you want to, do you want to become a laptop to Delilah? Or you want to lean on the bosom of Jesus Christ? The most safe first place, and the most best place for you and for me today to lean is the bosom of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. That's where the love of Christ flows because that's where the heart is that's where the throne of God is that's where the tabernacle is that's where the love of God flows to you lean on the bosom of Jesus Christ and he laying on the Jesus breast said unto him Lord who is it in verse number 26 and Jesus answered he it is to whom I shall give a soul when I have dipped it when he when when he had dipped the soap he gave it to Judas is carried the son of Simon and after the soap said and entered into him that's what happens when you think that way for it Jesus Christ and you think that Jesus it is Jesus Christ and you receive it Jesus is not entering into you it is Satan that enters into you because you're in Judas Satan entered after he took that bread if you believe that bread is Jesus Christ thank God that bread is not Jesus Christ but Jesus is a living bread he dwells in you when you believe in him amen and so we find here Samson slept on Delilah's knees and he told her all the secrets of his power and she cheated him she assassinated his faith upon her. But if you tell your secrets to Jesus, He will mold you, fashion you, and renew you, and revive you. Amen. Jesus told secret to John because John loved Jesus Christ and Jesus loved John. This is what happened to jo Jacob last Sunday. Jacob told all about him and God turned Jacob into Israel. Amen. That's what he will do to you. He will make Samson a John today. Amen. Romance with Jesus is everlasting. Everyone who has romance with Jesus conceives the fruit of the Spirit and delivers it through his or her life. When Jesus, when your romance is with Jesus, you know what you deliver? The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, gentleness, wow. That's what you really uh, deliver. Man, you'll become pregnant if you romance with Jesus. What you are pregnant with? The fruit of the Spirit. Amen? And you deliver by your life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, hope. That's what you deliver. That's what happens with you women. When, you, when your love affair is with Jesus Christ, He will tell you everything and He will make you a good Christian, a powerful Christian. Amen. Amen. The bad news is, romance with the world will destroy you. The good news is, romance with Jesus will build you up. Amen. Amen. If you're not with Jesus this morning, and if you are on the way to eternal lake of fire, and not knowing where you will spend your eternity, the good news is, you can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. He is God. He died for your sin by shedding His blood. He was buried and He rose again on the third day. He loves you. Would you put your trust in Jesus Christ today? He will make you His child. Believers, stop romancing with the world. Start romancing with Jesus. Every eye is closed, every head bowed.